NATO today confirmed many more troops are on their way. It warned the Kosovo Liberation Army, though, against exploiting their arrival. As the on Saturday, the four Serbian leaders announced they needed to consult with their superiors in Belgrade. NATO officials first said the talks would resume later in the day, but later announced that the meeting was adjourned until Sunday. The delegation has asked for more time to consult with their higher authorities in, Be in Belgrade over the content of the military technical agreement. We have, in the interest of seeking a swift resolution to this, agreed, and we will reconvene the meeting tomorrow morning at 08.30 at Kumanovo Airport. To dismantle all air defense and radar systems in Kosovo and take them out of the province so NATO aircraft can safely monitor the withdrawal of Yugoslav troops. The retreat must be rapid, says NATO, and the military has seven days to get every soldier out. It start leaving, but only provided they stick religiously to the routes and timetables dictated by NATO's Kosovo commander, General Mike Jackson. It is Jackson who will decide when Belgrade is allowed to send security forces back to Kosovo and how many. NATO also says Yugoslav forces must not be redeployed to Montenegro. We hope and we are planning to have them all back into Serbia. That's where they belong to. The first NATO troops could move into Kosovo within hours, says NATO, of the announcement airstrikes are suspended. They'll start in the capital, Pristina, paving the way for the rest of the force. General Jackson's orders include disarming the Kosovo Liberation Army. We expect the Kosovo... ...to have a NATO presence in every village and on every street corner. NATO ambassadors... They had drawn the short straw today. Effectively, they were being asked to sign their country's surrender. And to add to their humiliation, this cafe is owned and run by an Albanian. The British general, Sir Mike Jackson, was here quite literally to give the Serbs their marching orders. Bundles of maps were brought in to show the Yugoslav delegation the precise routes by which their men are required to exit Kosovo. According to General Jackson's camp, today's talks were a success, even though they've been adjourned till the morning. Each point of the military technical agreement has been discussed word by word, line by line, and sentence by sentence. What we now have is a full understanding on both sides as to the content of the military technical agreement and what it actually requires the Yugoslav delegation and the Yugoslav armed forces to do. And what it requires them to do is to get out of Kosovo within one week. But tonight the talks here were suspended when the Yugoslav delegation said they needed more time to consult their political masters in Belgrade. Session, the talks were suspended until Sunday at the request of the Yugoslav delegation. Still, NATO commanders emerged satisfied. What we now have is a full understanding on both sides as to the content of the military technical agreement and what it actually requires the Yugoslav delegation and the Yugoslav armed forces to do. The two cordon off the area and are keeping guard. The Yugoslavian army officers showed up three hours late after Belgrade had voiced concern over security and criticised the absence of a Russian representative at the talks. Discussions centre on the law. NATO says the meeting is to clarify NATO demands and is not a negotiating session. NATO has said it requires clear evidence of the Yugoslavian withdrawal before it ends the bombing campaign. If a UN resolution mandating a peacekeeping force is proposed and passed without delay, the force could start moving into Kosovo as early as next week. Kosovo Liberation Army follow news bulletins on Western radio stations. They're skeptical that acceptance by President Milosevic of NATO's plan will really bring peace to the province. I know that Serbs always lies and they don't tell no any time the truth. What they say is that the war is finished, they, they want that the war get finished, but we don't trust them. So will KLA fighters hand over their weapons as NATO's peace plan prescribes? They have accepted a peace deal in the Kosovo crisis, but this is the first step along a difficult path. The deal now has to be implemented, and that involves 40,000 Yugoslav troops and special police withdrawing to be replaced eventually by a 50,000 strong multinational force. The alliance has been largely involved in humanitarian efforts in Macedonia and Albania so far. Now it faces tougher tasks.
The K-4 peacekeeping force is due to move into Kosovo within 48 hours of an official ceasefire coming into effect. 15,000 soldiers are on standby in Macedonia. Another 8,000 are stationed in Albania. NATO wants its peacekeeping force to enter the region on the heels of withdrawing Serbian forces. The alliance says with the International Protection Force in Bosnia, S4, where about 1,200 Russian soldiers are serving under NATO leadership. This time, however, Russia wants a more prominent profile. But the alliance is facing a race against time. It aims to have the province's basic infrastructure restored by the winter. K-4 troops will oversee reconstruction work and protect returning refugees. NATO says its troops are the only ones ready to be deployed immediately, which is why it says there's no alternative to the alliance forming the core of the force and commanding it. The next few days are likely to determine the future relationship between Russia and NATO. If these German soldiers move into Kosovo as part of the international peacekeeping force, this company of signals engineers from Dillingen will have a special assignment. They will be responsible for setting up a radio and telephone communications network for NATO forces, just as they've done in Albania. German troops currently stationed in Albania and Macedonia, numbering 4,500, will be among the first soldiers to move into Kosovo. Since the crisis began, they've been involved in humanitarian work, setting up refugee camps and distributing food and supplies to displaced Kosovo Albanians. Both the soldiers and Germany's defense ministry know the Germans have been engaged in defensive exercises for months, preparing for the new dangers they'll face in Kosovo. NATO leaders want a robustly armed peacekeeping force that is capable of defending itself and refugees from attacks at any time. Lessons learned in Bosnia, where UN soldiers were unable to interfere with Serbian atrocities, have not been forgotten. The muscle for Germany's contingent will be provided by an armored battalion with 33 modern Leopard tanks and other transport and armored vehicles. The Leopard 2 tank is one of the world's most powerful and accurate battle tanks. German forces expect to be deployed mainly in southwestern Kosovo, where there is less danger of clashes. Their mission will focus on logistics, reconnaissance, and the construction of hospitals and clinics for returning Kosovars. They attribute a total of 6,000 soldiers to the peacekeeping force. The defense ministry wants to increase that number by at least 1,000, but first needs parliamentary approval. Well. An airfield near the border with Serbia. David Chater, Sky News, Macedonia. Britain orders out of Kosovo. British troops are given theirs to march in. These could be among the first to police the province and reverse the ethnic cleansing. Their reinforcements will take the numbers of British forces massed on the Macedonian border with Kosovo from the current 5,500 to 13,000 by next weekend. The first wave of British paratroopers fly out from RAF Bryce Norton, and they'll be followed by soldiers from the Royal Gurkha Rifles and the Royal Irish Regiment. A dozen transport helicopters, including the Chinooks, are on their way to Kosovo, the biggest such deployment since the Gulf War. NATO says it intends to have troops of the International Security Force from inside and outside the Alliance on every street corner. The KLA was always going to be a major stumbling block in any peace negotiations. While others were looking for evidence of an easing in tension, they continued their battle against Serb positions in the mountains around the Albanian border. Their generals at the front line are deeply suspicious of any agreement with Milosevic's signature at the bottom. My opinion is that the agreement will not have a major effect on people of Kosovo. Milosevic has signed a couple of agreements which he has not stuck to. This happened in Bosnia and Croatia, but instead of keeping his word, he increased the fighting. We have seen in our brigade that over the last two days the fighting has increased. He has brought in fresh troops from Bosnia and we have had a heavy shelling, but our soldiers have held them back. Commander Berisha says his troops will obey any instructions from their political leaders. The first NATO troops could move into Kosovo within hours, says NATO, of the announcement airstrikes are suspended. 
Citadel staff in the capital, Pristina, paving the way for the rest of the force. General... Near the Blanche border crossing, when General Mike Jackson, commander of NATO forces in Macedonia, arrived. He had waited three hours for his scheduled meeting with the Yugoslavian delegation. The Serbs failed to show at the appointed time. It is unfortunate because it would seem that this is not being taken quite as seriously on the Yugoslav side as it might be on our side. When the representatives of the Yugoslavian general staff and interior ministry finally did arrive, they immediately sat down to hear General Jackson tell them what now must be done to end the bombing of Yugoslavia. At one point, a Serb officer stepped out of the meeting, communicated by radio, and then crossed back into Yugoslavia. But he returned in 30 minutes, and the meeting resumed. After more than five hours, the Yugoslavian delegation emerged and headed back across the border. It appeared the meeting had ended. It had not. ...against those forces with emphasis on artillery pieces and armor. You see an attack against a tank. And we will continue to hit such targets until the implementation of a withdrawal... Round two of the talks, this time in a new location, a French forces base. But the agenda hasn't changed for the Serb military or the NATO team led by Lieutenant General Sir Michael Jackson. The Alliance says he's not here to negotiate. He's giving the Yugoslavs their marching orders out of Kosovo. Yesterday, the Serbs broke off after more than five hours of talks. They said they wanted to consult Belgrade about technical problems. I can now uh, formally confirm that the second day of talks uh, between the Yugoslav military delegation led by Colonel General uh, Svetozar Marianovic and the NATO military delegation led by Lieutenant General Sir Mike Jackson started again today at 09.25 hours local time here. Britain says it's the beginning of the end of Kosovo's misery, but there's no triumphalism and history records why the bombing must continue. The tented hangar normally used for servicing aircraft. Overnight alliance bombing in Kosovo and Serbia targeted forces in the field. The Prime Minister says there'll be tricky negotiations before airstrikes can be called off. The logistic considers a mandate for sending in ground troops. Finland's European envoy Marty Artisari will brief Chinese leaders in Beijing. China. hours of talks today. Have you managed to learn of any developments so far? Yes, sir. We can uh, talk about another sticking point which has emerged, that one of the uh, main points of the NATO plan is for the Serbian forces to withdraw uh, into Serbia itself and only into Serbia, but there should be a 25-kilometer deep demilitarized zone. Uh, we believe that is one of the things which is also causing some upset in Belgrade. Um, but at the moment, uh, the discussions here are being termed as businesslike. Uh, they're being conducted in a professional manner. These are very difficult issues and complex issues. Today, as part of the peacekeeping force, were from the 1st Battalion Parachute Regiment. Logistics staff, mine clearance and signalers were on the first flight out. A further 800 paras are flying out throughout the afternoon. Although part of a peacekeeping force, they may face rebel Serbs, mine-infested routes and booby-trapped buildings. We've been training for this for a while now. So uh, we're all ready for it and uh, hopefully we'll do the job as good as we can do. Getting all the kit together, ready, ready to go out and um, do what we've got to do though. As Land Rovers and equipment boarded a 124-100 Antonov, two Tristars were each carrying 200 troops this afternoon. A further 1,000 Gurkhas and soldiers from the Royal Irish Regiment will be flown out to Skopje tomorrow. Daily flights are to be stepped up to 20 from tomorrow and remain at that peak level for 10 days. These are just the first of many flights to man and equip the peacekeeping force. The British Army force in Macedonia currently stands at 5,500 men. That will swell to 13,000 by next weekend. Hazel Westwood, Sky News, RAF Bryce Norton. To leave the UK at... Well, after the uh, early signs this morning when the NATO was still upbeat and optimistic about the chances of this uh, technical military document being signed. Uh, over the last three hours we've had very, very pessimistic briefings about what's happening inside the, uh, the tented hangar here at the Commonover Air Base. 
Uh, essentially, the NATO spokesmen are saying it's not going well. Uh, the Serbian uh, delegation seem to be backtracking on the seven-day timetable that uh, NATO wants to impose on the Yugoslavian army to withdraw their forces. And uh, we've seen so far uh, three delegations leave. We've seen the, uh, the Americans leave, we've seen Germans and the French pull out from these talks. But uh, still inside is uh, General Sir Mike Jackson and the three senior Serbian generals who form part of the Yugoslavian army delegation. Macedonia, so the first out in an operation that will see 20 flights a day leaving Britain over the next 10 days. The soldiers will face mine-infested routes, booby-trapped buildings and possibly rebel Serb forces. We're expecting to deal with a wide variety of unexploded munitions ranging from obviously airdrop weapons that NATO has been dropping on Kosovo to minefields that the Serbs have been laying in the front of their defensive positions to possibly even booby traps to prevent refugees getting back into their homes. Six flights carrying troops left RAF Bryce Norton today, four VC-10s and two Tri-Stars. Land Rovers and equipment boarded a massive 124-100 Antonov. The first Paris to leave were from the Aldershot-based 1st Battalion. A further 1,000 Gurkhas and soldiers from the Royal Irish Regiment will be flown out to Skopje tomorrow. We do come with a reputation. Uh, it's not a reckless reputation, it's one of controlled aggression. Um, and as I say, we can cope with any of the circumstances that are thrown our way. But hopefully it was, it's, a, it's a sign of some serious intent on behalf of, uh, of the government and indeed uh, NATO. These are Bania, and these are the effects of bombs dropped from B-52s early this afternoon. The B-52s uh, flew in over the Kosovo hills and uh, scored hits on what are believed to have been the Serb positions there on the hillside. Uh, as you can see, a fairly large uh, explosion there as these huge bombs from the B-52s uh, hit the ground and uh, set fire to part of the surrounding countryside. They made two attacks on the positions in the hills and uh, no indications as to whether or not the Serbs responded in any way. There's certainly no sign of any anti-aircraft fire going back up into the skies. Of course, the B-52s, in any case, would be well above the range of any missiles fired from the ground. Today's talks, a NATO airbase bristling with sophisticated weaponry. The meeting had resumed after an overnight adjournment. Increasingly, it looks like the Serb delegation, led by General Svetozar Marjanovic, may be playing for time. One source says the Serbs are proving to be typically obstinate and stubborn. For NATO, the British general, Sir Mike Jackson, insists he isn't negotiating with the Serbs, instead simply telling them how and when they must withdraw. Even so, the Yugoslav delegation do seem to be saying no more often than yes. And so far, it's taken two days to go through what is only a six-page document. It's understood that tempers have become frayed and fans had to be brought in to cool the increasingly heated atmosphere in Macedonia to bolster the NATO force that would go into Kosovo if and when the Serbs do finally pull out. For now, though, it looks like these troops will have to wait a little longer. After two days of gruelling negotiations, during which the Serbs were supposed to have accepted NATO's withdrawal terms and not entered into discussions about them, the generals from Belgrade are tonight taking the art of brinkmanship into a whole new realm. Not that long ago, um, the uh, government had signed up, or rather had agreed, to the principles that were put before them. Tonight, um, that has not happened, um, and they are not signing the document at this stage. Okay. So they're objecting to principles, not details? Um, that, that is the case at this stage. Okay. They were, are refusing to sign at this stage. Um, however, um, we're giving them, or rather, there's been a mutual decision for two hours, or a few hours rather, sorry, and uh, hopefully they will come back after some negotiation between their own groupings, and hopefully they will sign. Signed by President Milosevic. There appears to be an impasse on the Albanian border. The Serbs are dug deeper than ever into their positions and the ref... As NATO commanders were talking, their bombers were attacking Serb positions. The bombs hit a few hundred yards inside the Kosovo border. The frontier war has been heating up. Artillery exchanges between the Kosovo Liberation Army and the Serbs followed the NATO airstrikes.
NATO is sending some very strong messages here. Forces, as Yugoslav generals balked at NATO's orders to get out of Kosovo. This uh, twin track strategy, air operations on the one hand, preparing for the peace mission on the other, will continue until the Serbs accept and begin to implement the detailed military agreement that has been outlined to them by NATO commanders. As, as that uh, great philosopher Yogi Berra once said, it ain't over till it's over, and we've seen no de demonstrable evidence that uh, he's starting to pull out. Yugoslav generals have asked for more time than one week to move forces out of the province and for protection from attacks by Kosovar rebels. Today's talks began in a field hangar on a French NATO air base here, four miles from the Yugoslav border. NATO was saying this wasn't going to be a negotiating session. Yugoslav military commanders have been given a six-page instruction sheet to sign, a list of roads and times and conditions for Serb troops to follow as they surrender control of Kosovo to NATO. But the talks dragged on through lunch of quiche and orange juice served by French soldiers, and the Serbs refused to sign. Professional and businesslike was the way one official described the talks, periodically tense said another. The progress was described as not much. NATO sources said the Serbs were challenging agreements already made by Slobodan Milosevic and his parliament in Belgrade, challenging the withdrawal timetable, saying Serb troops can't get out within seven days over Kosovo's battered roads and bridges, and they wouldn't have time to clear landmines, challenging a buffer zone NATO wants inside Serbia to protect the peacekeepers by keeping weapons withdrawn from Kosovo at a safe distance. Even with the heat on, NATO warning that bombing will intensify if the document's not signed, the Serb generals wouldn't budge. NATO said they might not be offered a chance to change their minds tomorrow. I didn't say no chance. Please don't Please say, say that. I said there's little chance. Why did you say because that? Because we want the agreement signed tonight. NATO knows that restarting a heavy air campaign now will be difficult diplomatically. The problem, said one NATO source, is the Serbs just don't want us in Kosovo. Richard Roth, CBS News, Kumanovo, Macedonia. On the port. Toxin, stand by to cast off. Enforcing an embargo in the Adriatic. Toxin, come ahead. And this time it's just a drill. But keeping oil and weapons from crossing this channel and ending up in Serbian hands is just one of many jobs assigned to the billion dollar guided missile destroyer USS Ross. One of 21 destroyers in the Navy's Aegis class. Small, fast, versatile ships engineered to take a lot of punishment and dish it out, too. No Navy in the world has a surface combat vessel of this size and tonnage that has more combat capability than the USS Ross. On a blustery morning, not far from the heel of Italy's boot, the Ross takes on supplies from a Navy oiler running alongside. This on-the-move refueling allows the Ross and its state-of-the-art Aegis weapon system to stay on duty, keeping watch over the 6th Fleet. We are protecting uh, other units in the fleet because of the Aegis weapon system. Excellent system, no doubt about it. The Aegis of mythology was a goatskin shield fringed with serpents. Aboard the Ross, Aegis is a radar shield fringed with missiles. Aegis gives you the capability to dominate the airspace. You can successfully detect engage and destroy anything flying in the air coming towards you. The eyes of the Aegis system are the AN spy radar transmitters located behind these two plates. The spy is an unusual radar. It doesn't spin around. Instead, it pumps out four megawatts of power in a scanning pattern called a phased array. That's enough to scan the skies over the entire Balkan region and track more than 100 targets simultaneously. It allows for quicker response. Overall, your total battle group effectiveness will be increased due to the range of visibility that you have. These images from the spy radar were sanitized by Navy minders before we were allowed to record them. The images we saw but were not allowed to record contained much more detail. The Navy figures it's better not to say too much about its new spy. Because we can't tell you the numbers and figures, that's probably uh, why it hasn't been publicized. But the Aegis weapon system is the most advanced system uh, of any service that I know of. Firepower. The Aegis destroyers are packed with it. Under these hatches sit Tomahawk cruise missiles. The Ross's weapons officers say they launched, quote, a bunch of Tomahawks early in the Kosovo conflict. These canisters hold harpoon missiles for ship-to-ship -ship engagements. And on the bow, a five-inch gun. 
defense, the Ross's very shape is defensive, with angled sides and radar-absorbing material covering many exposed surfaces on deck. The Ross shows up on enemy radar looking more like a fishing boat than a U.S. Navy destroyer. They're stealth ships, yes. The Ross also has two phalanx guns, the last line of defense against enemy missiles. The newest model phalanx can fire 4,500 heavy rounds a minute, or more than 70 rounds a second, a 50% increase over the previous version. But even if all its defenses are penetrated, Aegis destroyers are designed to keep fighting. It's the first Navy warship to actually be designed from the keel up with chemical, biological, and radiation protections and systems installed. One of the first things you notice aboard the Ross is you can only get inside by going through an airlock. You have to look through the portal and ensure nobody is inside. The interior of the ship is pressurized, like an airliner. That means air can only go out, not in. 